Hey everybody, welcome back to the show. Today we're going to be looking at the Leica MDA. So before we get into the specs of the camera, let's talk a little bit about what these cameras are for and the history. So Leica actually produced these between 1967 and 1977 and they weren't produced for taking pictures on the street, they were made for scientific uses. So they'd put this camera onto the back of a microscope and they'd be taking pictures of, you know, the slides or, or whatever they're looking at through the microscope as, as a record. So as a result, there are a lot of cameras out there, uh, the MDAs, uh, MD2s, etc., that have been used a ton. You know, they've had thousands of rolls through them. On the outside, they're gonna look cosmetically fine because they were not really being bounced around, they're just mounted on something, but they could be heavily used. At the same time, you know, there could be one that was put in a drawer, forgotten about, never used, and now you find it on eBay. So later in the end of the video, I'm gonna tell you how to find one that's in good condition. Um, but now let's take a look at the specs on this camera. So the most noticeable thing about this camera is obviously that it does not have a range finder. It's essentially a blind Leica. If I take the external finder off it, there's no way of knowing what you're shooting. It's just a box with a lens on it. So due to this, uh, it's actually quite a bit lighter, which is something no one really talks about. It's a nice feature. You know, having this around your neck all day, you know, every little gram, every ounce counts. So it is a quite a bit lighter camera. Um, one thing that I do recommend is if you're going to be using one, you use it with 28 millimeter lenses or wider, just because you're going to have to be zone focusing and the wider your lenses, the more depth of field you have. It's just going to be a lot easier to use this camera. Now, obviously, because it doesn't have a finder, there's also no meter in this camera. So you're going to have to be able to either use the Sony 16 rule meter with your eye or if you have a, uh, an external light meter and you don't mind carrying that around with you, you're going to need that as well. Since it doesn't have a finder, it does have a little bit extra space on here, which uh, you can do whatever you want with. I thought it would be cool to kind of customize it, so I put some stickers on here of Dora Amon. And today I'm actually shooting with a 28 millimeter, so I have a 28 slash 25 finder. Uh, Zeiss finder in the cold shoe. That is one other thing to keep in mind. This camera is a cold shoe camera uh, So if you do decide to put a flash in there, you're gonna have to have a PC sync cable and it's the the regular PC sync not the special M3 style uh, PC sync, which is nice If you do decide to shoot flash with this uh, you probably want to use one of the brackets. So you can get one of these brackets designed for M cameras. They come in plastic or metal and you put that on. You're gonna have to mount your flash in that other shoe. You can keep your finder up in here and then using a PC sync cable, you connect the flash to the camera. So one of the other things about the MDA is actually that there's no guard around the lens release button. It also is different in that on the inside of the camera, there is a slot for putting in information. So when they were using the microscopes, they would have uh, a little piece of paper or, or, you know, maybe acetate that they would put in there that would put some information on whatever they're shooting. So on the inside, there was kind of a cutout on the back of the frame. I don't think this would affect your images in any way. I haven't noticed it but that is something that is a little bit different about this camera. On the MDA, you'll also notice that it does not have any uh, timer mode or frame line preview selector. I actually really like this because there's nothing to get away in, in your fingers. I really dislike the M3, uh, the timer, because it kind of messes around with your grip on your camera. And you know, it's just the most pure, simplistic, basic camera with nothing to get in the way of your fingers and, you know, holding onto the camera. So when you look online, you're gonna notice that there's uh, cameras that come with a regular base plate and the data plate. The data plate actually has a little hole in it so that they can put those strips up into the camera and have a record of information. 
I'd highly recommend that you look one, look for one with a normal base plate, just because when you put the camera down, it's gonna sit flat, but also if you wanna put accessories like the flash bracket on, it's gonna fit. With the data plate, it won't work. So let's talk about the most attractive part of this camera, and that is the price. If you go on eBay, you can find these pretty cheap compared to other M cameras. Um, I've seen them for you know as low as $250, $300 if you get a good deal. The average price now is getting up there around $500. If you want a really fresh minty one, you might pay as much as $700. An important thing to think about uh, for this camera especially, and pretty much all M cameras if you're buying used, is to factor in the cost of a CLA, uh, cleaning, lubrication, and adjustment. Usually it's around $300. The likelihood is that uh, this camera has been sitting you know, in a drawer somewhere and hasn't been serviced since it's made or hasn't been serviced in a long time. So make sure you factor that into your purchasing decision. So in the beginning of the video, I mentioned that I would tell you how to find a good copy that hasn't been beaten to death in a laboratory by some assistant. So the way you actually do this is not by looking at the outside of the camera. Because the outside of the camera would have been put onto a microscope, it wouldn't have been bounced around for the most part. So it might not have as much wear and tear on the body itself. What you have to look for is on the inside. So when you take the base plate off of the camera, there's an edge on the body that is painted black, a flat black. Look at that edge. If it is all shiny and metallic, silver color, if you can see a lot of silver, that means that it's been used a lot because they've been taking the base plate on, put a roll in, you know, shoot it, take the base plate off. The more times that they take the base plate off, the more shiny and worn that's gonna become. If you find one where it's completely black, with no shiny metallic parts, that is going to be a good camera because that means it hasn't been used very much and you know it's not gonna be as worn out. Another thing you can look at is on the shutter dial. Usually these cameras were used on one shutter speed. Mine was mainly used on bulb mode. So you can actually see where they've been advancing it and then having the advanced lever come back and whack the shutter speed dial and you can see the brass has been exposed there. It's so funny as I've been walking outside today I have encountered so many animals. Some cats, a marmot, a lot of wildlife out this morning. One other interesting thing that I'd noticed about this camera is as far as I know it's the only camera that has the M4 style rewind as well as the M3 style advance. Uh, I'm not a super expert but if there's other cameras leave a comment down below but as far as I know this is the only camera that comes stock with those. So let's talk about who should and shouldn't buy this camera. If you're going to be shooting on 35 millimeters or longer don't get this camera if you're someone who likes to have a meter on the inside of the camera, you don't know how to use Sunny 16 or you don't have an external meter, this is not gonna be the best camera for you. If you are someone that likes to shoot primarily on wide angles, you use you know an external meter or you can meter with your eye and you don't mind zone focusing, then this will be a great camera because it is a little bit simpler, it's lighter, it's cheaper, so you don't have to worry about it as much and yeah that's about it so that pretty much wraps up the episode on the mda if you have any questions or comments make sure you leave them down below and i'll catch you guys next time bye